Hey everyone, Mike here with ebikeschool.com, and today we're going to talk about helmets, specifically what helmets you should look for for fast electric bicycles or electric scooters. This is a question I get a lot, people asking me, you know, how much should I spend on a helmet for a fast e-bike, or what are the best helmets, and these are tricky questions to answer because anytime you talk about, you know, how much should you spend on a helmet, the question you're really asking is, well, how much is your head worth? And so to try and frame this a little better, I've collected five of the helmets that I use commonly here, and these span a wide price range from about $30 to about $500. And I use these different helmets for different purposes. So I wanna go through each one of them with you guys and show you how I go about choosing which helmet I'm gonna wear for different situations. And if you wanna get any of the helmets that I feature in this video, I'm gonna put an affiliate link to all of them in the description down below this video. If you do choose to purchase through that, it just helps my channel and helps me continue to create these types of videos for free. And of course, I know that everybody has a different budget available, which is part of why I wanted to gather so many of these different helmets together. Personally, because I'm something of a professional e-bike rider, I invest a little bit more in my helmets and I also have more of them in my quiver. But hopefully this gives you a better idea of what you might want to look for in a helmet for you. All right, so we'll start over here on the cheapest end of the spectrum. This is the Triple Eight skateboarding helmet and this is the helmet that you've probably seen me wear in almost all of my videos. One of the most common questions I get is what is that helmet you're wearing? Well. This is it, the Triple Eight Skateboarding Helmet. Now the reason that I use this for almost all of my videos is simply because it's a nice looking unobtrusive helmet that kind of blends in with my head and doesn't take away focus from the bike that I'm trying to show in that video. This is not the best helmet out there by any stretch of the imagination. It is in fact the cheapest helmet that I have. The price ranges from somewhere around $30 to up to about $45 depending on the color and the size that you get. And I actually have a pile of these. Amazon tells me that I have seven of them apparently. The thing is they're so cheap that I've bought several over the years. I ride bikes in many different places around the world so I often leave one there when I'm going to be coming back so I don't have to travel with the helmet. Traveling with a backpack a helmet takes up a lot of space. They're also so cheap that I sometimes tend to lose them like I just found a couple in a box at my parents house that I must have left there a while ago. Now as I said this is not a particularly expensive or even a particularly safe helmet. In fact it says it's not even rated for any bicycle standards. So so I'm not really recommending this to anyone as a safe helmet, but if looks are important to you and you want a helmet that's not going to look, you know, like a uh, dorky bicycle helmet and having a helmet that you like the look of actually means you'll wear one, then it might be worth it. It's a simple ABS shell, the foam on the inside, it's got some um, pretty dense foam in the top here and then a softer foam around the rim. It's got what it's called the sweat saver lining that uh, doesn't start to stink when you sweat in it, which I can vouch for, it's actually pretty nice, but it is not a particularly safe helmet. There's just nothing here really than a bit of foam in the top and a hard ABS shell. If you were to, you know, land on some rocks, this would probably keep them out of your skull, but it's not really gonna spread out any impact that well. So like I said, I don't really wear this one that much when I'm actually doing my own pleasure or commuting riding. This is really just my filming helmet because I like the way it just sort of disappears in my shots. This helmet's also pretty lightweight. It's 420 grams or just under a pound. So as far as helmets go, you know, it's not too heavy and it's, it's easy to just sort of throw around, throw in your bag, and when you're wearing it, you don't feel like you're wearing that much. So now moving on to a bit of a more expensive helmet. This is the first what I would call good helmet. This is from Burn. Burn's prices are sort of all over. You can get them, I think, starting around like 60 or 70 bucks. But this is the Hudson, which is a bit more expensive. I believe this one is about $140. And this is just a much safer helmet. Whereas the Triple Eight here is not rated for any sort of standards for helmets, the Burn has like a bunch of standards. It's rated for the uh, Consumer Product Safety Commission bicycle standard. It's got the EN, I think it's the 1080, let me check. Uh, the EN 1078, sorry, it's the 1078 standard. There's also the NTA 8776 standard, which is actually e-bike uh, helmet standards. That means it's actually rated for up to 45 kilometer per hour or 28 mile per hour riding, which is what the fastest electric bicycles do, at least the fastest legal electric bicycles. The other important thing is that this actually has the MIPS system. So if you see that yellow thing on the inside here, that's a torsional protection. What it does is on an impact, it keeps your head from rotating so much. So it actually moves about a centimeter or a centimeter and a half inside of the helmet. 
And so on collision, the whole helmet can sort of shift a little bit around your head. And that just makes it so your head and your brain actually is doing less twisting and, and bouncing around in there. So it's another added safety protection. The nice thing about this one is it also has a spot for an LED light in the back. I actually have it out and I have it in another one of my burn helmets that I left in the US. But if you get this helmet, it actually comes with an LED light in the back. So you've got just another higher up light, higher than something you'd put under your seat, for example. It makes it easier for cars to see when they're coming up behind you. I also just like the burn little visor here. You can take this out if you don't like it, but I like it as a soft visor. It gives you a little more sun protection and it doesn't stick out so much when you put it in a backpack. You know, it just sort of collapses down because it's soft. The burn Hudson is also lighter than the 888. This one's about uh, 350 grams, I believe. So it's about three quarters of a pound or so. And it's just nicer when you're out riding and you know, you're moving your head around. You don't have so much weight up there. Now it does breathe better than I thought it would. It's got, I think, 13 vents all around it. So it looks pretty enclosed, but it actually breathes. But if you really want to breathe, then you're going to need a more open helmet. And that's what I have here. This is the LEM Motive Air. And this is the helmet that I really use mostly for fitness riding. Whereas this is sort of a good, you know, urban, I'm doing some transportation, I'm running errands, I just need to get somewhere helmet. The LEM Motive Air is my I'm going out for a fitness ride and I'm really going to sweat today kind of helmet. This one is just super lightweight. It's something like 220 grams. It's like half a pound. I mean, this thing is just, it almost floats. It feels so lightweight, it's crazy. And you can just see how much venting it has. I mean, the whole thing is venting. Now, how do they get it that lightweight? It's a combination of the low density foam and the uh, carbon shell here. So you got that carbon fiber, which is adding the strength without adding a lot of weight. Now this does make the helmet more expensive. This is like a $220 helmet. So you're really investing a lot of money by the time you get to this point, but you know, you're, you're paying for your head and that safety. So if you want a really lightweight helmet that still meets multiple bicycle helmet standards, but is better for that type of fitness riding, I definitely recommend the LEM Motive Air. This is just, like I said, this is my go-to for any type of fitness riding. At this point, we've talked about three different bicycle style helmets. So I wanna move on to my full face helmet. This is the Bell Transfer. This is more of a downhill mountain bike style helmet. And as you can see, it's got a full chin bar here, which means that if you do get into a crash, your entire face is protected, not just your head. Now it's got the polycarbonate shell. It's got the uh, soft foam cheek pads. It's got the foam for your head in here. So it's a very safe helmet but it's really designed for that type of uh, more impactful riding where you've got the chance of hitting a tree or just you know, having a, a more uh, catastrophic type crash where you'd want your face protected as well. Now, just because it's marketed as a downhill or a mountain biking helmet doesn't mean you can only use it for that type of riding. If you're riding a fast electric bike on the road and you, heaven forbid, get into an accident, you may want this extra protection around your face. You know, a good quality helmet like these might protect your brain, but it's not going to keep your pretty face from getting all scratched up. So having this type of face protection can be a really nice benefit to a big helmet like this. Now the downside is that this is much heavier. This is about uh, 2.2 pounds or about a kilo, a little over a kilo even, I think. So it's a heavier helmet. When you have it on, you're gonna feel that weight. You know, when you go to turn your head and you do shoulder checks, you feel a lot more helmet on you. But if you want that wraparound protection and really the best sort of full head and face protection, the only way you're gonna get it is with a full face helmet like this. Now Bell does have other helmets that are lighter. If anything, at some point, I might wanna to upgrade to one of those. I got this helmet mostly for riding my Saran, and to be honest, I don't really use it that much for street riding. I used to wear larger helmets for street riding, and it's something that I've sort of phased out, but I still think there's a lot of merit to full face helmets like this. Now the price actually falls in between these two helmets. It actually cost $170. At that price, again, you know, we're talking about how much is your head worth, and in this case, how much is your face worth? So it's sort of up to you to decide how much face protection you want in addition to the head protection, but if you're at all worried about it, the comfort of having a full face helmet really is hard to pass up. All right, so now that we're on the topic of full face helmets, let me show you my last helmet here. This is the AGV K6, and this is actually a motorcycle helmet. 
when do I wear this? When I'm riding motorcycles. So if you see me riding the uh, Harley Davidson Livewire, Zero's electric motorcycles, all of the different electric motorcycles I wear, I'm usually wearing this helmet, or in fact, I also have an AGV Sport Modular that has the uh, whole flip up front, like a modular helmet. Though I prefer this one most of the time because it's lighter. This is a 2.9 pound helmet or about 1.35 kilos. And so this is the heaviest of all, but it's also the safest of all. And motorcycle helmets are typically heavy. In fact, this one is much lighter than most motorcycle helmets. And part of that is because of the materials it uses. It uses a combination of carbon fiber and aramid fibers in the shell. Then it's got five different layers of foam in here, five different densities. And the whole point of multi-density foam is that it protects at different speed impacts. So if you look at any other helmet, in fact, all of these have just one density of foam. And what that means is that they've sort of had to optimize for what speed they think this helmet is going to be impacted. With five different layers and five different densities of foam in a motorcycle helmet like this, it means that each density of foam is optimized for a different speed. So, you know, the lower density foams will crush more at lower speeds and the higher density foams won't really impact much, but at higher speed, you want that higher density foam because you're just gonna you know, crush right through the lower density stuff immediately. So this really is the safest of them. When I first started riding electric bikes, I was wearing a full face motorcycle helmet. I went on eBay and I bought a used full face lid and it wasn't a great helmet, but it gave me that peace of mind, especially in the very beginning of my e-biking career. I mean, that was what, 10, 11, 12 years ago at this point. Uh, but I was on pretty fast e-bikes. My first e-bike I built for myself went 30 miles an hour. So having a motorcycle helmet was a really nice thing to make sure that I was really protected. I don't really wear motorcycle helmets when I ride my electric bicycles anymore. Part of it is that, especially living here in Israel, it's very hot most of the year. And I like to be able to have helmets that breathe a bit better. Though I will say that in the winter, having a full face helmet like this is really nice because it keeps your face nice and warm and you're not freezing your nose and lips off. A downside to a full face motorcycle helmet is that these are likely going to be more expensive. This one specifically is about $500, which is quite pricey when you compare it to everything else here. I think it's almost as expensive as all of these other helmets combined, actually. So you're talking about a big investment, but again, it's like, you know, how much is your head worth? Like I said, I usually stick to this one for riding actual motorcycles because that's where you really need this level of protection. But there's no reason you can't use this with an electric bicycle if you just want to make sure you have that highest level of protection. Anytime you get on a two-wheeler, you know, we're making risk management decisions all the time and we're laying the balance of safety and fun and convenience and everything else. So while this will hamper your style a little bit, it's more to carry around, it's more to wear, doing those shoulder checks, it's, it's a lot more inertia on your head, but it's the best safety out there. So if you really want to make sure you're protecting yourself, a motorcycle helmet for fast e-bikes or fast scooters is a definite possibility. Now there's one more thing I want to talk about that applies to all of these helmets, and in fact every helmet, and that is adding action camera mounts, like GoPro mounts. You'll see that on a lot of these, I have GoPro mounts on them. I've got one here, I've got one definitely on my uh, filming camera here, I've got them on my, um, let's see, over here on my bell transfer. And I do that because that's kind of my job, right? Like I make bike videos. But you should know that having these mounts on here and definitely having cameras on those mounts will change the way these helmets function in a crash and will almost certainly reduce their effectiveness. These helmets are designed to not have anything mounted on them. When they perform tests on these helmets, there's nothing stuck on the side that's creating a stress riser in that square spot like that. And definitely if you have a big camera mounted on here, that's gonna add a lot of torsion and just other unpredictable forces in a crash. So keep that in mind that if you're really worried about safety, consider putting a GoPro somewhere else instead of on your helmet. Now, there's not really anywhere that's safe to put it. You know, a chest-mounted GoPro, if you get into a crash and that thing goes an inch into your rib cage, there's a lot of important stuff in there. You know, putting it on the bike is probably the safest, though then it can become an impalement hazard. Basically, there, there's no real guaranteed safe way to ride with cameras, but just keep in mind how they might impact your safety if it's something that you want to consider and weigh into your risk choices. 
So there we have it. Those are my five most common helmets that I wear. I've got a couple other floating around, but these are really the five that I go to for my different types of riding. I hope you guys found that video helpful and interesting. Like I said, if you do want to look at any of these helmets in more detail, I've got links to all of them in the description below. And last but not least, it is time to announce the winner of the giveaway from my last video. And the randomly selected commenter who will win a free copy of one of my books is... Travis Liu. So congratulations, Travis. Just let me know which one of my books you'd like and where to send it. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my most recent book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. And anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below. You can say anything you'd like. You can tell me what kind of helmet you wear. And hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And anybody else who wants one of my books but doesn't want to wait that long to hopefully win it for free, you can always find them on Amazon, which helps support me making these videos. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you here next time.